さあどう I bet you somebody, I bet you somebody had your snap map on. Like the I had finally done it. After talking to Jasmine for a few months in school and over the phone, I finally built up the courage to ask her if she wanted to go to the mall and maybe see a movie. I don't think I've been happier than when she said yes. I mean, you remember what it's like when you're 13 and you're about to go on a date for the first time. It's an awesome, but anxiety. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't doing that. I was playing video games, going outside, you know. Stuff like that. I wasn't dating. I wasn't dating until. Well, I mean, I wasn't really dating like that as so much as me just messing around, you know? So. Y'all dating? Y'all dating is me messing around. So I was dating. When I was in college, around 19, 20, yeah, Jesus. The induced feeling. So on the days leading up to the weekend, we were talking about what movie we might see and what's... That's, you can't really see the screen like that, but I, I think that's... That's a weird, why don't look, oh, it's a screen protector, okay. Or as we wanted to walk through, we didn't have much money, but it was more about hanging out while we weren't in school. Then the weekend came, it was Friday night, and we had been snapping each other back and forth when I noticed something odd. You see, Jasmine had been sitting on her couch, which was right in front of her living room window. And in one of the pictures she sent me, with one of those funny filters on it, I could have sworn that I saw something behind her that was blurry as if it had been moving past the window. But before I could tell her anything, she sent me another snap. My jaw dropped and I didn't know quite how to react. This time, what I saw behind her was clear as day to me. You wouldn't have noticed it if you weren't focusing on the window But because I had already been curious about it, I was paying really close attention. I could clearly make out the silhouette of a tall figure behind her. Jesus. It appeared to be wearing dark clothes and I couldn't make out any details before the picture disappeared forever. I would have, I would have either texted her or Snapchat her saying, look behind you and that's it. I would have lost all communication. Don't contact me. Please don't contact me. Please don't contact me. Because when I get clucked up of that person that's behind you, I'm clucking you up. I quickly screenshotted it. I swiped the screen and began to type out a message asking her what was behind her in the window. But before I could finish the message, she sent me one. Did you just save that picture? So I quickly finished typing my response to her. It read, yeah, sorry. Take a look at it again. There's something in the window behind you. I saw that she was typing back in response. Then all of a sudden the typing symbol disappeared. I messaged her a few more times, but when there was no response, I called my mom into the room. I showed her the picture and she let out an audible gasp. Without hesitating, she pulled her phone out and called the cops to let them know that there appeared to be a grown man spying on a young girl. We gave them the address, and then we did everything we could to get a hold of Jasmine's parents, who had been working at the time. We never saw or heard from Jasmine again. When the police finally made it to her house, they found signs of foul play along with her cell phone. The screen had been badly broken, as if someone had thrown it. Notices went out to be on the lookout, and a zoomed in picture of the silhouette was shared around the local papers. No one came forward. That was only a few years ago, And sometimes I wake up hoping that it was all some sort of a weird overdrawn prank. I couldn't imagine what Jasmine's family was going through. Jesus. After my mother and father split up, it took a long time before my mom was ready to start dating again. But I remember how happy she was when she finally felt ready. She was definitely confused about how the whole dating world worked nowadays. 
with all the apps and social media. I, of course, wanted her to stay away from Tinder. I mean, it was my mom. I didn't like the idea of her dating, but I definitely wanted her to find someone who she could be happy with. So I told her to stick with talking to people she knows, or maybe someone from work, and I ended up showing her Snapchat, what she had heard her friends talk about. So we set it up on her iPhone, and she immediately began taking selfies that were way too close to her face. But she ultimately seemed to have everything under control, so I began minding my own business. As the days went on, she said that she was having so much fun sending pictures to her co-workers. All in all, she seemed to be enjoying herself. That was until one day, she came in and I could tell that she was upset by something. And when I asked her what was wrong, she told me about a guy from work that used to be really creepy toward her shortly after her and my dad divorced. Uh -huh. And she said that somehow he found out that she was on Snapchat. I didn't think anything of it at first. I just told her that she- I thought about that shit as soon as you said that shit. How that's, you didn't think about anything, nothing, anything, nothing was wrong with that, anything, nothing was sus about that. No, it was creepiest guy in work at your job finds that finds out that you have a Snapchat. Block him if she wanted. But she said that she didn't want to cause any problems for herself at work. Hell and no. instead was going to ignore anything he sends her and just act like he doesn't exist. Which sounded like a solid plan to me, but I told her to let me know if anything happened. And after all, we didn't really talk about it much. Then about two weeks later, I was sitting in my room playing some Borderlands 2 on my 360. And I happened to look out the window, which faces the street. I noticed that there was a car parked along the curb across the street from my house. It was raining out that day, so I couldn't really tell if the car was empty or not. Despite it being midday, I just figured that it was someone visiting the neighbors or something, and I got back to playing my game. What triggered something in my head that there was something weird going on was the fact that I noticed two separate occasions where I saw the car's headlight turn on for a few moments and then back off. After a few hours passed, and I saw that the car hadn't moved, and I was pretty sure someone was sitting inside. She came into my room and looked out my window, and she didn't say anything. She told me not to worry about it, and that it was probably something for my neighbor. It turns out that she was just trying to keep me from getting nervous. About 20 minutes later, I saw the police pull up behind the car, that was when my mom let me know that the car belonged to her co-worker, the creepy guy that wouldn't leave her alone. The officer suspected that he used the Snapchat map feature to find out where my mom was. When they searched his car, they found what they refer to as a kill kit in his trunk. God dang There it. were zip ties, plastic wrap, and large trash bags. Oh my God. Needless to say, my mom deleted Snapchat that night, and we pressed charges against the guy. As far as I know, he is still behind bars. Jesus. I know what happened. Have you ever had someone randomly add you on Snapchat? Well, maybe after you hear what happened to me, you might not accept the request next time. You see, while I was in college, I got a random request and I accepted it. I just assumed it was a classmate, and I would find out who it was when they messaged me or snapped me. It wasn't long before I started getting some really weird messages. No pictures. They only used the chat feature at first. They would send me things like, I'll see you after statistics class, or how was your lunch? Only they would know exactly what I ate. It was clear that someone knew my schedule and was watching me. But I honestly just figured it was one of my friends playing some weird prank on me. I didn't pay it any mind. And that's I'm not your friend if they play a prank, uh, if they play a prank like that. That's not your friend. I don't care, I don't give a damn. All my friends know not to do shit like that. If you do, the voice papers, ASAP. Then responded with a joke answer or something. But one day, that wasn't going particularly well for me. I was a bit cranky. 
And when I got a message from the person, I basically told them either to tell me who they are or leave me alone. Immediately, they became aggressive, asking me who I think I am and saying that they are always watching me. So that weekend, I decided to go home and spend some time with my family and old friends to unwind. I told them about everything that was happening and they agreed that it was probably one of my friends being a jerk. But that night, when I was sitting in my room, I received a message from them saying, come out. I was confused, so I chose not to answer. About two minutes later, I heard a knock at the door. I froze with fear. I was so worried it was the person who was threatening me. But how would they have followed me home from school? I had my snap map location turned off. My father ended up answering the door, and apparently, no one was there. Right after he closed the door, I received my first picture from the person who was threatening me. I was afraid to open, but eventually I did. It was a picture taken of my dad at the door looking around oh my for God. whoever not. They were right outside my house, messing with me. Me and my family agreed that it would be safer for us to notify the cops, so we called 911. When they showed up, they couldn't find anyone, but told us to call them if anything else happened. I immediately blocked their Snapchat and admittedly didn't sleep that night. For the next few weeks, everywhere I went, I felt like I was being watched. I ended up transferring to a different college between semesters, and I didn't move out of my parents' home until earlier this year. Not because I couldn't financially, but because I didn't want to be living alone and have those people start harassing me again somehow. Now, I have a small house of my own and a big St. Bernard, who's not only my best friend, but my guardian in case someone should ever try to hurt me or my family. <sighs> this social media should be getting out of hand sometimes. I don't really gonna hold you. It's still, I like a couple, a few years ago, like back in 2015, 2016, I was getting some weird messages from my fans, from you all. Like some of y'all are just weird, but creepy weird too. Like, you know, I had to make sure all my social media, like my, my, uh, I had to be careful about what I post. And I still have to be careful about what I post. And it's just, how do you, like, when y'all have a social media app, turn off the, order, turn off the uh, location. That's all you gotta do, please. And then if you if you get like a random message, you know, on some sus shit, just watch your back. That's all I gotta say with some Adidas. Keep it cool, keep it classy, and I love you, stay happy. My family. <laughs>